I'm astrologer and life coach Penny Dix. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome back if you're a regular visitor here. And if you are new here, a big welcome to you. And I'd love it if you'd subscribe. So um, today I'm bringing you my in-depth look at the forthcoming new moon in Aries. And this is on March the 21st, the day after we have the spring equinox. So is this perfect timing? Is this a new beginning to transform the soul? Well, let's have a look. So it is a very interesting new moon, this one, because it comes hot on the heels of the spring equinox. Not only is this the first new moon of the astrological new year, but the fact that it's at the zero degree of Aries, plus a few minutes, highlights the potential for powerful new beginnings, especially as Pluto is at the 29 degree 58 minute point of Capricorn, just two days away from its momentous shift into the sign of Aquarius. And of course, Saturn is now newly arrived in Pisces. So this energy is really getting kind of, you know, wound up. So we've also got a harmonious sextile from Pluto, our dwarf planet, who's also going to be star of the show pretty soon. And Pluto is making a harmonious like sextile, which is like this, to the new to the new moon. And this brings a surge of positivity and hope to all our intentions. Pluto, remember, is the planet of transformation, power, death, rebirth. Now let's just have a little look at Mars, because Mars, in a sense, um, is, is closely aligned with this new moon because it rules Aries. And Mars, of course, our god of action, war, assertion, energy, sexuality. And Mars is still in Gemini. Now it's making a hard square to both the new moon in Aries, the sign it rules, and Neptune in Pisces, creating some confusion and a kind of sense of false starts to new projects. But don't be deterred by this. Instead, what we have to do is analyse any doubts or fears that we've got and face them and look for realistic solutions. And you can help with this by using the trine, which is a good aspect, from Saturn, my big outer boy Saturn, my planet of restriction, boundaries, containment. But you know, Saturn is such an importantly, importantly, Saturn is such an important teacher planet. And Saturn, of course, is now in Pisces and it's making this helpful trine to Mars in Gemini. And this helps us to sensitively think things through because Saturn in Pisces can bring order to our chaotic thoughts. So how will the planet fare? Well, let's have a look. Well, the dominant placement of Mars in Gemini in the 10th house highlights the public opinion, highlights what's going out there or on out there in the on the world stage. So I think that what we're going to see is continuation of fighting talk in all sectors as solutions are sought for, for new beginnings in the various problem areas of the planet. And with the predominance of planetary activity in Aries, the potential for the diplomatic routes to be overtaken by physical fighting sadly increases. And yet, this new moon is imploring us all to find the courage to stay 
true to the path of diplomacy in all negotiations. So I had a little look at Vladimir Putin's chart. I thought, hmm, Aries, it's the sign um, ruled by Mars, the god of war. Let's see what's or how this new moon might be affecting Vladimir. So with regard to the UK, Ukraine war, I feel that he will be feeling increasingly cornered, which can have a damaging effect of him ramping up his onslaught onto Ukraine. And I also looked at the new moon in conjunction with the chart of Volodymyr Zelensky. And I think he is going to be pushing all his energies again into imploring the wider community to help with not only arms, but also medical supplies and medics as the situation increases and worsens as they come out of that winter period. And I think breakthroughs are possible, but they require once again um, a senior experienced world leader to mediate. I don't know who that can be. There must be someone out there that could fill that role. The Aries new moon really is bringing a wonderful opportunity to find brand new ways to solve long-standing problems. It's so symbolic. It's at the zero degree. It's basically happened just a few hours after the equinox. This is such powerful, powerful, powerful energy. So let's see how it's going to affect you personally. Well, I think this new moon brings wonderful opportunities for finding new, innovative ways to improve relationships. I don't think there's ever been better energy to begin again. It also brings optimism, hope, for all new projects you're thinking of initiating. You see, Aries is a cardinal sign. So that as well gives the moon this, this energy of, of an extra boost of assertive energy to start that business, write that book, apply for a new position, start a YouTube channel. And if you've been looking for a green light, well, this is it. Now, also, we have to look at Saturn, whose gentle, helpful trine aspect to Mars, our god of action in Gemini, advises us that careful thought, taking one's time to think through important moves, adds a touch of realism to dreams and ventures that you want to launch. So don't rush ahead manifesting your ideas because this really does say this energy with Saturn's presence there, ending good, um, sending good positive energy. If you act with thought, prudence, then success becomes a real possibility. So what about my final thoughts before I move on to your individual signs? And Jerry, my lovely tech guy, should have time stamped them in the description box so that you can find not only your sun sign, but also your rising sign. So let's just collect the various strands of this new moon energy to get a clearer picture of how to utilize these positive energies. So as I say, the spring equinox, the day before this new moon, and the zero degree plus a few minutes of the actual new moon highlight the power and potency of plans launched at this time. There's never been a better time to launch a business, to start a project. The energies are underlined and written in red in capitals and provide super powerful energy to kick off this astrological new year 
And as long as you exercise prudent mindfulness, that would ensure your success. Right, so let's move on to your individual signs. Let's start with Aries. So for you, Aries, of course, this is your astrological new year on a kind of triple level. Not only have you just had the spring equinox, you've now got this new moon right at the beginning of your sign. This is super powerful energy for Aries subjects. Great time to start a new chapter of your life in whatever capacity. So use this energy constructively, positively, be um, be hopeful, be optimistic. I think that after being through or going through some quite tough times, Aries, and uh, you know it's 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 been a bit of a tough ride, and that Jupiter conjunct Chiron, which you've got in your sign, um, has certainly opened up some wounds, but enabled healing to other difficulties and wounds. So Aries, this is just the best time for you to start again at the important things in your life, whatever that might be for you. And because it's in your first house, do something lovely for yourself. Doesn't matter whether you're male, female, transgender, in between, all those other um, sections of society, which I will probably get wrong and be criticised for politically, but I just can't keep up with it. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm a pensioner. <laughs> That's my excuse. And, you know, but do something nice for yourself. Get your nails done. Um, buy a new outfit. Get your hair done. Uh, go for a massage. Do something that makes you feel good. All right, let's move on to Taurus. Taurus, I think you are going to experience with this new moon some real kind of breakthroughs on an inner level. I think you're going to understand a lot more about you that uh, has been quite difficult for you to grapple with. I think you've been struggling with Uranus in your sign, which has been pushing you to change, to wake up, to just, just shift your energy. And I think this new moon for you is giving you the opportunity to do just that, to try different ways, new ways of looking at your internal world, and I think you're going to have the aha moments and the realizations and the awareness around certain topics in your life that it's been difficult to access. It might take a bit of time. It might not happen on the 21st of March, but it will happen. Gemini. So for you, Gemini, this is in your house of the community at large, wider groups of people, technology, your hopes, your wishes, your dreams. What do you want to launch, Gemini? What have you been dreaming of that you really want to put out there in the public domain? What have you been working on? Have you been writing something? Um, it'll be very interesting to see how, Gemini, you work with this energy because you've still, of course, got Mars in your sign kind of um, urging you to, to really keep your energy levels up to cope with all the ideas that have come flooding into you that you really want to, you know, put into new projects and new ideas. So if there was ever a good time to do it, whatever it is 
for you, whatever it is. Do it now, Gemini. Cancer. So, Cancer, your career, your standing in the public kind of arena. Some of you going into politics? Well, you know, certainly politics could do with some fresh blood. Um, I do think you are looking to uh, make changes with your working life, with your career, your passion. Remember, if you're not working, if you're retired, you'll still have something that you're really passionate about. So apply this kind of energy to that. It might be to write your memoirs. It might be to create a beautiful work of art. It might be that you want to take up um, cooking and experiment with different kind of traditions and different areas of the world, different tastes. So that's the sort of kind of energy that is around. It's really good energy. If you were starting a new job at this moment or launching a business, once again, you couldn't be doing it at a better time. And the results, the long-term results will be good, will be positive. Right, let's move on to my lovely big pussycats, my Leo lions. Leo, so it's in the sector of your chart that is to do with learning, higher education. It can be your connection with, <coughs> excuse me, with spiritual matters. It's also, of course, about travel. And with Jupiter, still in this sector of your chart, then it wouldn't surprise me if you are uh, embarking on some travel at the moment. And if you're not actually traveling, I think you'll be making plans to do so. I think it's long awaited and long wished for, but it's gonna happen, Leo. Now let's move on to Virgo. So Virgo, this energy is giving you the opportunity to get your kind of joint finances with significant others into a better state. You know, Virgo, you do like kind of bookkeeping on one level and you are good at making sure you dot the I's and cross the T's. And this new moon is really helping you to make a massive move forward with anything that has got left behind. Also, this new moon could bring um, a kind of windfall into your life. Because remember, Jupiter, our planet of abundance, is in this section of the chart. So it could very easily bring in some kind of unexpected benefit from a, an investment, for example. Right, let's move on to Libra. So Libra, for you, of course, it's in your seventh house of significant close relationships. And this is lovely energy. If you needed to begin again with your loved one, if you have one, then this energy really blesses that to do something a little bit different, a little bit innovative. You know, maybe travel, do something that just gets the two of you away. And the good news for, for Librans who might be single and who would like their single status to change, then obviously Aries in the seventh house and a new moon here coming hot on the heels of that spring equinox could bring every opportunity for you to meet someone new. It really is super good energy for starting new, new adventures with new people. And also it, it covers business relationships. 
So it might be a partnership that you agree on with, with somebody that you're, you know, working on a special project together. Now let's move on to Scorpio. So Scorpio. Well, this new moon for you is in the part of your chart that's to do with your kind of routine, your daily routine. It can also be your health. It can be your um, uh, sort of uh, needing to get checkups and things like that. But it's a new moon. And I think if there are any difficulties, excuse me, if there have been any difficulties with little health issues that need to be kind of addressed, this new moon energy says you're having a brand new start. You know, it'd be great energy to start a new health regime, um, you know, to get physical, to actually sort of uh, join a gym, get a personal trainer, do something that gets you outside Scorpio, gets you out of your navel gazing and, you know, just kind of gazing into the depths of the plutonic oceans. So, you know, think about that, Scorpio. Get out and get some fresh air because what it will do is give you a brand new perspective on how you would actually like your day-to-day -day routine to work better. Right, so let's move on to Sagittarius. So, Sagittarius, this is in the sector of your chart to do with fun. So, I predict a fun month ahead. I predict a fun quarter year ahead. Because remember, this is kind of energy that is actually going to spread out over the next few months. So, it's it's a great time to start um an artistic venture, anything of that nature. You could have good news to do with children if you have them. They could be bringing lots of interesting news to your door. And also, if you were looking um, to, say, actually have children, if you wanted to get pregnant and it hadn't happened as yet, then this new moon could just be the green light that enables it to happen. So that's quite nice energy, Sagittarius. Okay, let's move on to Capricorn. So Capricorn, spring clean, new home, new move. Are you thinking of moving? <laughs> I don't think every Capricorn on the planet is going to be doing that. But it is good energy if you wanted to move um, this is brilliant energy to do it and it would be an absolutely blessed move and really, really good energy to do it with. But how we can use this energy is there may be new possibilities um, to change your environment in a way that makes it, uh, that just brings it up to date for you. Because I just think because now Saturn has moved into Pisces. I just wonder whether you need to bring into your living space, because Saturn is your ruler, more sense of flow and the blue colours, the sort of the watery depths to just kind of bring a bit of peace and harmony in to heal you after the energies of Pluto going through your sign, who of course is about to move into your house of finance. So I think that could be quite creative use of this energy. Now let's go to Aquarius. So for you, Aquarius, this is about how you communicate with the world at large. It can also be your close kind of network of friends. It can also be um, the technology of uh, writing, of creating something with the written word. And maybe Aquarius, there are some of you out there that have been thinking of writing something, maybe fictional or non-fictional, 
something about a subject that you're very passionate about. But this would be great energy to start it. Also, I think some of you Aquarians are going to find yourself teaching about subjects that are very dear to you, even if it's just on a one-to-one -one basis with another person who really wants to learn about something that you know about very well. And now finally, we come to our oceans of emotions, Pisces. My oceans of emotions, Pisces. Wow, this is great. This is in your house of finance. How cool is that? <laughs> I think this is great. This Pisces, this is going to give you an amazing opportunity to bring some abundance into your life because, of course, you've also got Jupiter in this sector of your chart. So if you're not counting the pennies, and I don't mean me, then why not? Because I really do feel this new moon, I mean, obviously, we all have to do something to bring these things into our life. We can't just sit there and wait for it to fall out of the sky. But um, it'd be a good time to buy a lottery ticket, Pisces. I think great, great time to try, try your hand at that. But I do think that it's about um, shifts and positive changes in your financial situation. And as I say, Jupiter, and you've had Venus going through this part of your chart as well. So you should also, I think, feel much more sense of self-worth with this energy and this new moon. I think it's going to suit you, especially because Saturn has moved into your sign, which will give you some boundaries and grounding. So this really is super energy, Pisces. And if you do win the lottery, don't forget me. <laughs> On that note, I'd like to thank you all very much for coming to join me for this in-depth look at the Aries new moon on the 21st of March 2023. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, share, all those amazing things that most many of you do and I'm really, truly grateful and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.